Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So my last video, I was talking about my new camera, the 2600mm, and uh, I use off-axis guiding, and I've got one on my 294. I've put that on the 2600 and it all worked well, but I want, wanted one for both cameras so I didn't have to keep swapping around. I looked at the ZWO M68 large uh, OAG, um, so this is one with a wider aperture and also a larger prism. So I've just received that, so we're gonna show you that today, show how it's mounted onto the system, and then hopefully on my first light, we're gonna show you it uh, operating and uh, see what kind of performance it gives back. So I say the larger prism, I'm hoping will give us some more stars to guide on, and uh, hopefully we'll see some improvements. So uh, we'll go and have a look at that now. So hi everyone, the um, Off Axis Guide is by ZWO. Uh, this is the original one that I had and it worked really well. Um, I'm gonna continue using this with my 294 MM Pro. Um, the reason why I've moved from this to the larger one on the left is because there's a much larger aperture on it. This also comes uh, with a slightly different fitting system. It's got the tilt ring on the uh, front and on the back it's got four holes for bolting it to the uh, filter wheel like you do the 2600 camera. So the original off-axis guider worked really well um, although the prism is a lot smaller I do like the fact that this prism is bigger and one thing I've noticed is that the back of the prism is painted black so I might paint the black uh, the back of the uh, original one to see whether that improves performance. So on the original one um, it's got this uh, sort of uh, basic fitting for uh, putting your camera in and you just slide it up and down and lock it in position to get focus. Um, now what I did, I actually had already a Beta um, helical focuser. Now this works really well but it, one thing it does do, uh, which I, I don't like, is that when you rotate it to move the camera up and down it actually turns the camera as well so it's the things it causes problems with is a the, the cable that's plugged into the camera gets twisted and also you're turning the uh, image with the uh, helical focus or with the ZWO you turn the collar and the whole unit moves up and down so the camera stays in a fixed position so that will make life a lot easier when trying to focus it the camera I use for uh, off-axis guider is the 290mm mini and um, I used to use it on the original but I'm going to move this over to the new uh, off-axis guider as it's got a larger sensor uh, on this camera and you'll notice that on the original uh, OAG it's got a very small round window for the sensor to look through to the prism and on the uh, new off-axis guider it's got a large square window so that's going to expose more of the sensor and what I'll mostly do is use a 120mm on the original one. Placing the camera in is quite easy, it just slides in and obviously you've got nice movement up and down to get rough focus. And Once you've got that you can then lock it in position and then turn the collar to get fine focus. And once you've got everything where you want it, you can then lock it in place with this brass uh, locking nut. So really nice uh, guider actually, of a really nice quality, uh, feels really sturdy and I'm going to get this bolted onto my filter wheel and we'll show that process next. So before I fit the uh, off-axis guider on, I wanted to show you how the camera is mounted to the electronic filter wheel. You've got these four screws here that screw through and they go into the camera. So the camera is bolted directly to the filter wheel. What's nice about that is that you get the sensor nice and square, the camera square onto the filter wheel. 
when you use the threaded side, sometimes the camera isn't quite as straight as you want. So now that I've got that open, um, I'm going to put the carousel back in and then we're going to proceed to uh, show you how to mount the uh, off-axis guider to the front part of the um, electronic filter wheel. With the filter wheel all back together, we're now going to uh, mount the off-axis guider to the front of the filter wheel. So you'll notice there's four holes on the uh, side of the filter wheel there. And if we look at the off-axis guider, there are four corresponding holes that we need to bolt this onto. Now to get to it, we need to remove this tilt ring. So with an Allen key, and it's the same Allen key that you get with a lot of uh, ZWO products like the electronic filter wheel, um, sorry, the uh, electronic automatic focuser. Um, I think it's a two mil Allen key. We undo these larger bolts. There's two sets of bolts on this uh, tilt ring. The larger ones are the ones that hold it uh, mounted onto the off axis guider. So we just get these three bolts out and it will give us access to the other side of those holes so that we can bolt the off-axis guider to the filter wheel. And there they are, there. So these are not threaded, the bolts just sit in these and they actually thread into the filter wheel. The threads are on that. So if we offer it up, we can see they line up nicely. Okay, so uh, the bolts come already in the kit. You get the uh, they're the same size as the bolts I've just removed, but you do get extra bolts for bolting this to the filter wheel. So we'll get these in and we'll get this mounted to the front of the filter wheel. With the off-axis guider now bolted to the filter wheel, the next thing to check is that the prism stem is not cutting across any part of the sensor. If you get this, you'll end up with a shadow on your subs. And the other thing is to make sure that the stem is also, um, although it's not cutting across the sensor, it's still in the light path to capture the stars. If you need to make any adjustments to it, just above where the stem is, you'll see an Allen bolt. And if you undo this, it allows you to move the uh, stem up and down so you can get it in the correct position. So you don't want the bottom of the stem cutting across the sensor. And then when you put your uh, tilt plate back on, that the sensor is inside the aperture. So it's gonna capture any light coming in from the telescope to capture the stars for guiding. Now that the imaging train is completed and all connected, it's a nice uh, sturdy build it's now time to put it back on the telescope and uh, the next clear night to test so luckily enough I was able to test quite soon so I remoted into my observatory we got everything up and running and we got it focused and we started to do some guiding as always uh, I was on a galaxy area I was working on the Croxi galaxy uh, not many stars about but enough for it to guide and as you can see here we had some nice guiding at uh, actually 0.4 sort of RMS total so it uh, performs extremely well and I'm very happy with it.
So there you have it, that's the new off-axis guider, the M68 Large, it's got the larger prism, and I do think that makes uh, a difference, especially with the 290mm Mini, um, that uh, allows more of that sensor to be um, used, and I think uh, gives you a much greater chance of seeing uh, more stars. Um, I've never really ever had an issue where I've not been able to see stars, I know some people do, uh, maybe I've just been lucky on the targets I've picked, but even on uh, galaxies where you get very few stars, I normally get at least two or three, and, and that's all you need to get your guiding to be working. I really like the bolt-on system. Uh, I think QHY started with this idea, and when I first saw it, I thought, oh, I I'm not sure about that. Um, but I'm sure you've all been where I have, where you've threaded something on, and you've not done it tight, everything's nice and then you go to unthread it and it won't come undone um, really bad and uh, I like the bolt on because you don't get that issue uh, yes it's fiddlier yes it's more work but it's a very stable fit I think you've got less chance of any light leaks um, and of course nothing's going to particularly get stuck on um, maybe in the future though they'll come up with better systems like a, a twist and lock or a quick release system or something like that um, I personally like to keep my image, my image trains uh, complete. Then I don't get the issues of dust motes appearing out of nowhere, which I find almost impossible to calibrate out sometimes with my flats. And then I end up spending hours on my processing trying to remove some artifact that I didn't want in my image. But uh, I'm sure we all had the same pains. But yes, I'm really pleased with that uh, off-axis guider brilliant uh, performance with the APS-C size sensor and I know it's supposed to work with the full size sensors as well so there's enough room in there so that you can not uh, cause any problems with shadows on your subs which uh, I've not had at all so I'm really happy with that. Um, yeah I think it's uh, a really a really nice product and uh, I think ZWO have improved the off-axis guider quite a bit from the original one that I bought even though that works fine and I'll carry on using that, um, the new one is really nice. Um, the Practical Astronomy Show is on next week and I'm really hoping to go. Um, unfortunately, I can't guarantee I can go because I've got to apply for the leave from work. Fingers crossed I get it. I'm sure it, it should be okay. And what will be really nice is I can finally meet some people that I've been talking to online put some faces to names it'll be really nice but uh, if I see you there please come over and say hello be nice to uh, chat and meet some people that I've spoken to many times online just like to say thank you ever so much for all your support it really does mean a lot and to the channel members thank you ever so much that extra support really does help until next time though I'd like to wish you all clear skies and please take care